Okay, so Peepers wanted to wanted me to talk about Gaia. See if I can do this without being too emotional. Okay, so you guys know Gaia and I are really, really good friends on the other side. And uh, really, really good friends. She is uh, uh, as also, as you guys know, outside of this creation, uh, there is not a, a d division between male and female. That, that is a part of the dualistic uh, game that is played here in this creation, this dividing of things, of vibrations between this and this. That's part of, that's the whole point. Uh, that in the amnesia part, that's the whole premise behind all of this creation, is that division. So, um, but I am going to call her she because when she came here, uh, she came and opted to play the earth, fill that role, and to play with the feminine vibrations being stronger um, on this planet in this game playing that role. Uh, her best friend, some of you might call her soulmate, I guess, or or whatever. I don't know what you want to call her, but uh, the person that I would say best friend would be the closest vibration uh, that would be that would be appropriate for calling this person, this entity, this being is the sun. And that best friend came in to be the, uh, the balancing and bring and take on the more masculine energies and the protector. And so I will call the sun. He, I will call uh, Gaia. She, all of the planets, and all of the stars in this particular game are either masculine or feminine. All of them have chosen one or the other. Uh, wait a minute. Well, okay, all of them have chosen to be just a, a, a little bit stronger, even though there's some that are much more balanced. On the planets they still will lean slightly more of one or the other uh, there are some that are really really close though okay back to the point at hand is guy so although there's nothing negative on the other side I'm going to tell this like there is because I am using human words and I have to deal with uh, the illusion of time and space in order to talk to you so I'm going to talk um, kind of in those in a human regards even though taking into consideration of course that there's no negativity and no judgment or anything on the other side okay so think of it like this that we were all sitting around me with my pub friends and of course our pub friends are the same and a lot of our pub friends are the same so we're sitting in a pub and we're all having a beer together and um, somebody brings up this creation and the idea behind it, the premise behind it, and how it was going and how far down vibrationally they were able to get and how phenomenally amazed we are that uh, this has been achieved and uh, the different entities that we've spoken to about their experience there and how amazing it is and um, how uh, amazed we are at the, at the humans, the long-term humans that are doing this. Um, our communication with the, the creator, the one that started it all, and his best friend, and um, how it's all playing out, and everybody is very excited about it, and all the entities that are playing the game are very excited about everything about it. And then it comes up, this earth, uh, opening and of course on the other side with no time and space we know how that's all going to play out and uh, the creator who is a friend of Gaia's and um, sir, not as close to me but closer to her and he's making a call for somebody to play the role of, of Gaia and the sun and the solar system etc etc and 
uh, there's there seems to be kind of some trepidation on any entity wanting to play that role. And Earth, Agaya is kind of a, oh, she's so sweet. She's so sweet and kind and loving. And of course, everybody is, but you know, that's just her strength. Is She's just, she's just one of those kinds of entities that she just feel good being around her and some other entities are exciting being around them that their energy is is exciting and you just kind of go like this and there are are other entities that are kind of go with the flowish and Gaia is just she's just it makes you feel good when you're around her when you hang out with her she is just so sweet she is so loving and um She's definitely a maternal type feeling that you get that the entity that is Gaia. And, um, yeah, that's just how she is. She's just like that. So when he made the call and then he specifically asked her because he thought that she would be very good in the role. And she, he, of course, knew her best friend and thought that, that he would be stupendous as the role of the son. Then, of course, he asked them, and, of course, Gaia said, well, okay. Now, all of us that were in the pub around her said, oh, bad idea, bad idea. Don't do this. Don't do this. Can you see this right here? And she goes, I know. But, you know, he really wants this part of the creation to work like this, and and I know that I would be very good at it, and we'll say, Bob, my best friend would be, you know, that he would be, he would rock as the son. And we all agreed that she would be stupendous in the role. We all agreed that he would be stupendous as the son, as would all of the beings that played the solar system around her. But we reminded her that these are lower vibrations and um, that that is, you know, a di that would be difficult. That would be a difficult, not very much fun. That would be very exciting and a unique experience. And that's basically what she went back to. She said, yes, but this is normally the kind of thing that I do. And this would be something completely different. It would be an awesome experience. And uh, I think I'm going to go for it. So she did. And so we all, you know, gave her a big hug and him and Bob a big hug and everybody else that was in the pub with us and we gave them a big hug and they went off and they jumped on the Boeing 747 and flew off to play that role. And then we run around and do our own little thing. And then Gaia screamed and a bunch of us in that pub came a running, me being one of them. So that's kind of how that plays out, explaining it in time in a time space sort of way so then i think she wanted also to know that you know how the whole gaia thing works okay so gaia just like your body and think your body is full of cells and it's full of organs and you run the show you know you're in in charge of all this stuff running right you are the god of all this stuff running right. Whether it runs right or it runs wrong, then that is your kind of responsibility, right? And that's how Gaia is. So every human being that is created out of the, say, the molecules that are her, a part of her, then she considers them a part of her, similarly to... Uh, kind of like a, a, a child, a son or a daughter of you. That's kind of similarly how she feels about humans. And she feels the same way about any um, being that's alive on her, in her, around her, is that they are all her children. And she is um, very lovingly concerned with their well-being. She wants the best for everyone. But she also is very aware of the role that she's played in order to allow uh, human beings to experience the lower uh, vibrations. Okay? So she also has, just like you have energy 
lines running through your body. She has energy lines running through her body. And y'all have heard about that's where the uh, pyramids are, are. And, you know, lots of uh, people know about all of those uh, lines, that, those energy lines that run around the earth, just like they run around your body. And when they're interfered with, then it causes trouble. And, of course, the bad guys have known how, in order to keep the vibrations low on the planet, they've interfered with those energy lines and the flow of them. They also can uh, divert or kind of empirically steal the energy that flows around and through the, the earth, Gaia herself. And uh, Gaia herself, whenever she originally formed, and she originally formed, of course, in a much higher dimension, and then she slowly lowered her vibration and lower vibration, lowered her vibration, matching the lowering of everything in order to get to the place where 3D humans could experience those really low vibrations. And I've told you guys before that, that we do not see, um, we do not see third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. They're actually just dimensions that are one big wave of frequency and vibrations that I have divided up into third, fourth, fifth, sixth of all and above so that I could communicate with you about these different areas. And it's really gradually changes from one to the other, as we've talked about before. But as she was coming down and got all the way down to the fifth dimension, um, in the fifth dimension then what she looks like when she is like full-blown um, earth slash Gaia in her most pristine yet physical um, condition or creation and I would say fifth dimension is where she is the most physical right before she starts going into the lower vibrations that can become um, well painful to her in interrupting perfection per perfect physical Gaia form is in 5d and then as she drops down to 4d then there starts to be interruptions in uh, the flow of the energy and there's more and more and more of these interruptions as she lowered the, her planetary vibration to the lowest level of 3D that at this point um, was taken down as far as anyone knows. Now, it would not surprise me at all, now that this has been done once, that of course, there, as I've told you, there are many 3D Earth-like or just 3D planets out there now, and they will probably end up being able to take them even lower and even lower as the game continues to be played. But back to the Gaia, her most perfect physical manifestation is in 5D. And in that state, she is blue and green. Uh, just about everything is blue and green. So anything that is not blue and green on this planet right now is a disruption of the perfect manifestation of Gaia. So the ice-covered lands, the desert lands, are not, um, are not Gaia in her most perfect state in, physical, in physicality. And that is why there are so many people that go to, say, Arizona and New Mexico, because they can feel those vortexes of, of energy. And those vortexes in um, New Mexico and Arizona, those are healing points where the Earth is healing herself. Now, there are also vortexes and giant vortexes and uh, stargates and... Um, just regular energetic crossing points that are extremely powerful 
as well. But these smaller vortexes are places that are healing, which is why people feel so good when they go there because they go, it is healing energy that she is um, putting out on the planet to heal the planet. And you can also go there and be healed, work with those energies and be healed. There are also a bunch of them in all of the deserts uh, across the world, around the world. Okay. So that is what's going on with that. And as she goes from this fourth dimension, and like I said, she's almost completely out of a fourth dimension and in her most perfect place in 5D. And if you were to meditate, like I've told you, if you were to meditate, that you will have glimpses of 5D, and that is um, Gaia in her most perfect state. That's also a reason why I want to get back up into the snow, because I love, 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 love the snow, and I love the cold, and I know that Gaia in her perfect state does not have um, snow covering areas like that. That is not, uh, that is broken areas that do that. That is not her in her most pristine place. And since I am heading to 5D Earth, uh, 5D Earth will not have snow covered places like that. Now that doesn't mean that I can't create a, a mountainside that's covered with snow so that I can ski down it. I can manifest that and then it, uh, unmanifest it. But Gaia herself being that way is not her uh, most pristine, perfect uh, manifestation. Okay, does that make sense? Does that give you guys some data? Is that kind of what you wanted to know about Gaia? Uh, what you can do on Gaia, simply, um, anybody that's listening to me right now, you are helping by standing on the planet, by being here, by being here. And then, if you want to help her even more, then be happier and happier and happier. The happier you are, the more you help her. Okay? And, uh, yeah. And you've done tremendously well, every single one of you. And I will give a blanket statement to all of you from Gaia. And uh, with big hugs and love in her heart, she tells you all, thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for helping. And it is very, very appreciated. She loves you so, so much. Um, she also loves the human bodies that you are in so she asks me to pass on to please take care of them those human bodies that you are kind of renting um those are a part of her too so if you treat them badly or if you think bad thoughts about them or someone else that is hurting her too so being mad at uh trump or a meat eater or a vegan or um, I don't know, whoever you're mad at, um, that's hurting her too, because she feels that animosity going from one of her children to another. All of these human bodies are connected to the planet, and she feels that. So that loving yourself and loving each other and loving everything on this planet, uh, that is to help her, that all of that helps her. And to do anything else, hurts her. Okay? Does that make sense? Does that help? Uh, she's awesome. You guys will, all of you guys know her anyway. Um, anybody that's listening to you, to me right now, or ever will, uh, you know her. You know her. So that is going to ring true. What I have to say is going to ring true. And she absolutely is up to talking to any of you. So when you go to, uh, into your meditative state and can shut off that brain. If you go in before then with the uh, intention that you would like to communicate with uh, Gaia, uh, just state that intention and quiet your mind. Uh, you might start with having an intention of talking to Gaia with this statement or this question, and then just quiet your mind. And it will feel like it's you talking to you, which kind of is since we're all a part of one. And you are in a body that is her, from her, but it is her. Uh, you'll know it. You just need to trust that it is her, because it is. 
And uh, it also is awesome for her uh, when you do talk to her and uh, really believe that she has communicated with her. And the more that you uh, do that intending and ask a question, the more easily that that conversation can continue and um, it can get stronger and stronger and stronger. And uh, it's pretty, she's pretty easy to talk to uh, once you believe it and once you're open to it. So I encourage all of you to communicate with her. Uh, she would love to let you all know personally um, how she feels about what you're doing here uh, for her. And of course, she supports all her children in whatever experience that they have had or will have in the future. Okay. Oh, and in 5D, no, you will not meet her as a being because she will still be in planetary form. So she will be being the earth. Um, once you go outside of this game, then you can meet her. But she, um, you could meet her in the higher vibrations between 5D and outside the game. But it, it, it would probably just be easier for you. Most of you that are here, you might hang around 5D and move up through those dimensions until you're outside of this game. But more than likely, you're going to move quickly outside of this game, at which point you'll know who she is. She'll know who you are, and you guys can talk about it, and it will be fun. But no, she will not be a separate being. Um, she will be still being Earth uh, in 5D. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, guys. That's it for this one. Huge hugs. I love you guys so much, and I'll talk to you later.